action program, this is your last chance to get out. Go ahead. <laughs> well, guys, I, I just want to thank you guys for taking some time on your Saturday. And, um, man, I can, I can tell you that if you're anything like me, I'm just burning it at both ends and in the middle. And I've been in class two weeks getting my captain's license so I can get my West Pilot starter kit going and uh, join him, you know, out there on the water. And uh, at the same time, I've been trying to do all this. So I, I want to catch you guys up. And I got, an, I got an agenda. I can put it up there so you guys can know the flow. And depending upon how many questions you guys are going to have is going to really depend upon how long it's going to take us. But uh, what I want to do is kind of give you a brief overview of past, present, and future. And uh, we started this thing, you know, I guess it's two and a half years ago now. And, um, and it has been an absolute struggle. And, uh, and we have about $300,000 invested in this. So it's an awful lot of money. And, uh, and then when you count, you know, two and a half years of work full time on this, and not making a paycheck, I mean, it can it can uh, take a toll on you. So we uh, we started two and a half years ago. We came out with our first product, I guess, a year ago in November. And uh, and I doubt any of you guys actually got that product. It was called Hook Hunt, and it was a combined fishing and hunting application that just really sucked. And uh, and and we we had one developer who took us for about forty thousand dollars right out of the gate, and um, and gave us nothing in return. So we fought our way through that, you know, and and um, and then in January of last year, we basically started completely over again. And and in May of last year, we launched fishing ops, hunting ops, and you guys have seen the rollout of the different applications. But even with that, you know, it's kind of like when you jump in. I'm not a technology guy. I jumped into this not knowing anything, and I jump and I'm and I'm pretty fearless when it comes to stuff like this. So I don't have to know everything, you know what I mean? I can jump into it and learn on the way. And uh, so um, I've gotten quite an education. And 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 if some of you guys have ever done anything like this, it's called the School of Hard Knocks. And, uh, and she's a fine teacher for those who learn the lessons. And I think I've, I've, I've learned a few. And Dean will tell you I've got some, some scars on me that will last a lifetime. But, uh, but anyway, um, we have, uh, Paul and I, and Dee really, have been the ones who have survived this whole thing to where we are today. And, uh, and our last developer you know, was was the, without going into a lot of detail here, but anyway, he was a, he came off of the guy who took us for all the money, and he was actually part of all that, except he was on the receiving end, just like I was. He was doing the work for the guy, the guy was taking our money, not paying him, and basically screwing us both at the same time. So, to make a long story short, short we got kind of stuck. I mean, stuck isn't the right word because it was our choice to continue with that developer. It was just above his head, and he could not do it. And uh, and and it's um, it, this isn't easy stuff. If if the people, you know, developers, the law raised their hand and say, "Oh yeah, I can do that," you know, but in the end, they they don't know. They don't know. Most of them don't. And so. Now we fired that developer back in November, and and some of you guys know the iOS debacle that we had with iOS 7, and uh, and so we're now working with a company called Neotrex. Neotrex is a is a geospatial technology mapping company, and and you can really if you really look at waterfowl ops. You can tell a vast difference between waterfowl ops and any of our previous applications, just in the way it works. The ability to be able to cache the map, save them to your phone. I mean, it's just it's just remarkably different. It's it's very stable, and uh, so we have a good development partner. Now, that kind of brings us up to where we are today with the relationship we have with Mojo, 
I'm also working on a relationship with Hummingbird and uh, Bassmasters, and uh, and that's really in its infancy. It's nothing to get too excited about because when they're this young, they can go they can go either way. Um, Paul is no longer working uh, full time with us. He's had to get a full time job, and so he's he's doing that. So. I'm working on getting my captain's license. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, if I'm going to work on a tug or what I'm going to do. But that's not to say that I'm not going to work on this. I'm one of those guys, I don't care how long it takes, this, this thing is my passion. And, and so I don't care how many hours a day I have to work. I'm going to work whatever those hours have to be to make this thing go. And, and Dee will tell you that I am a bulldog. For better or for worse, I get my teeth into something, I'm not letting go. And, uh, and so for some of you guys, this is the first time you've probably ever seen me because you've seen Paul, you've talked to Paul, but I'm, I'm just behind the scenes. I do the graphics, I do the database, I do the Facebook, I do all the, all the graphics you guys see. That's me. I'm just behind the scenes, and, that, and I'm okay with that. And um, but now I'm having to do an awful lot more, and uh, and that that's going to dovetail into our discussion today, is because I really want for you guys to be successful too. I want you guys to be able to do whatever's in your heart to do. If you want to grow your brand, so to speak, and you want to grow yourself as a pro staff and and something like that in the industry. I want to do all I can to support you, and we've tried to do that with Mojo. Um, Paul does have T-shirts, by the way, that he's sending out to you guys. And I've been trying to get some of their new, um, new, new uh, stuff they're coming out with. And uh, and for some of you who do use Mojo products, we're actually going to be taking the remotes out of the out of their. Uh, um, motion decoys and all that stuff's going to be within the app, which I think is a brilliant idea. I mean, you no longer have to go back in the water to turn the daggone thing on and off. Um, and you guys will see that with their new product for Predator. Um, I don't know how many, how many Rob Rob Bates probably does some Predator hunting. I don't know. Rob, is that true? Yeah, I do a lot of coyote hunting. Does anybody else do any kind of Predator hunting? I do quite a bit of fox hunting. I do some coyote hunting. You do? Okay. I do. And Jordan, do you do any bear hunting up there or anything like that? Uh, a little bit of coyote and fox. No bear, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, well the, the Predator Ops, we just finished it. I just uh, completed all the graphics for that today. And, uh, and so you guys are going to see that coming out, too. Um, and... Um, and that's really going to be a cool product. They have something coming out called the Mojo Bullet, and the Mojo Bullet's going to look just like a shotgun shell, and it's going to have a Bluetooth speaker device for predator hunting. It's going to retract and uh, um, and come out of that. So it's so it's pretty cool, man. It's going to be. I know some of those products cost upwards of four hundred dollars. That product's going to be in the hundred dollar neighborhood, and the app totally conjoins with it. So. Anyway, those are all the things that you guys will be getting. Um, now, I know Wes, who fishes a lot, you know, if we end up putting a deal together with Hummingbird and, and with some of that, that's going to be pretty exciting, too. And, Wes, I can talk to you more about that some other time, you know, as it, as it kind of progresses. Um, so, anyway, that's where we are. So, where are we right now? Right now, I want to talk about Facebook pages. Um, I want to talk about how you guys are going to get content and all of that. So what I need to know is if you can send me an email. You guys all have my email. It's Christian at UmaxOutdoors.com. And I need to know who doesn't have a page. And, and for those of you that don't have a pro staff page, I'll get that up and running immediately for you guys. So that's point number one. Anytime you guys have a question, please stop me too. Because I'll just sit here and ramble along. Um, the second thing is, is how do you guys get content for your pages? Okay, I have a whole library of images. I have a whole, a whole, whole thing of uh, um, 
old Facebook posts that you guys can use. I, I just have a ton of stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys an invitation. It's going to be a link to Dropbox. Dropbox is basically a cloud service that holds all of our graphics so that you guys are going to have the ability to, to make your own posts, make the posts have some continuity to them as far as the look and feel because I think that that's really important. We're also going to make all of you guys content managers on UMAX Outdoors page and content managers for the I Love Duck Hunting page. And that's so that you guys can get beyond the audience that you have on your pro staff page and start building within the 16,000 people that we have on uh, UMAX Outdoors. Who, if some of you guys post on there, you can see they're not very engaged at all. And uh, but the I Love Duck Hunting page, those people are far more engaged. So, so we're going to give you guys the opportunity to post directly on there. All right, I think there's like 14 of you all, and and so if we just say, hey guys, start posting on there, that's going to be a mess, right? And so we're going to have posts going on top of each other and all of that. So what we hey Christian, I've got that. I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, are we are we all pro staff then right now as we sit? You are. You're pro staff for UMAX Outdoors and you're pro staff for Mojo Outdoors. Okay, because I haven't received any of the stuff that you guys are talking about. I, you don't have a page yet, right? Okay. You're well, right. Well, I'm asking the question. You don't have a page yet, do you, Alan? No, I do not have a page. You were... You've been so busy, I've been on hold on the back burner waiting for everything. I don't have a, I don't have anything. Okay, well, I'm going to bring you up to the front burner. Paul's going to get you the Mojo t-shirts um, that they sent us so that we can get those to you. And then um, as soon as I can get those guys to unlock the door to some of their other goodies, we're going to get those things out for you too. Some of the motion decoys for the turkey season coming up, the motion decoys for your for your duck honey and uh, that kind of stuff. So, but any relationship, I'll just tell you, any relationship with a big company like Mojo, it's a courtship. You know, and, and so me getting stuff out of them, it, it, it doesn't happen as fast as I wanted to. I wanted them to send it to me in the first week so I could get it out there to you guys, but unfortunately, yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> But I'm working on it. Um, so, so anyway, let me go keep going down this page here. Um, D is going to put together a content schedule. What the content schedule is going to be is going to be for those of you who want to be active. You know, we got guys that are active. We got guys that don't do anything. You know, and um, and and that's kind of separates. Who gets what? So if I get if I get five motion decoys sent to me, they're going out to the five people that are the most active. I can't send stuff to people who, who are inactive in doing this. And and this is a bilateral relationship. It's I do stuff to help promote myself, and I also do stuff to help promote the brand that I'm the pro staff for. So it's that give and take. So she's going to be getting that, that content scheduled together. She's going to put it on to Trello. You guys are all going to get an invitation to Trello. So you'll be able to go right there and see, hey, am I, am I on duty to put something up on the page to somebody else? And the reason why we're delegating this to you guys, it just, there's just not enough time, guys, in my day. I, there's no way I can do the Facebook post to it. You know? So that's why we're giving you guys this, all these access. All right, the next thing <clears throat> is blog sites. You guys are going to be given two blog sites, maybe one for fishing and one for hunting. Now, if we need more than that, we'll do more than that. And and I, if, if some of you guys remember, I created a blog and I posted it, and it was about journaling. Did you guys all see that? Part? Yes. Okay, that, that was kind of an example of what we're talking about. Because if I write about journaling, I'm writing about the app, 
I'm writing about mojo. I'm writing about I'm writing about it all. And I'm telling I'm telling people, look, journaling is the key to consistent success. Now, guys in fishing do it a whole lot more than guys who hunt. But I can tell you, everything's true for both. And I don't think anybody would argue that fact that if you match the environmentals, you're going to match so much of what you're going to do consistently to be successful. And and so those are the kinds of things we're talking about. If you guys want to. If you guys want to call me, bounce an idea off me, great. Give me a buzz. You know, we'll talk about it. Talk about it with each other. <clears throat> In um, the blog, the blog site, everybody will have. Um, you guys will be able to give me your own graphics. D and I will set it up graphically for you guys, so that when you guys log in to create your article. You can actually do it in a Word document and then transpose it right over there. And, and what I would suggest is you have somebody else look at it before you post it, because when you're doing the writing, you're also the worst editor. You know, um, so have somebody else just take a look at it before you before you post it. So so the content schedule we're talking about putting together is a blog schedule and a post schedule. And in the blog schedule, we're not asking any of you guys to become a writer and start writing a blog every week. It's going to be so that if there's five guys, you might be doing one every three months. And, um, and, and, and we're doing that for a reason. So let's just say that Rob Bates writes one, and, and he posts it on the page. Okay, that, We're doing that so that we can... We can gather engagement from the audience. When we gather engagement from the audience, you guys are creating dedicated followers of what you're doing. They're listening to you. They're attributing expertise to you. And and then the rest of the guys can go in there, like it, and comment and kind of and kind of foster that engagement that, that you really want that's going to build your personal brand of who you are. Does that make sense so far? No. Yep. Yep. Is this gonna be something like hey, hey Wes, I Wes, I see your mouth moving, but we're not hearing anything, so Can you hear right. um, I think I think it's because Alan's getting out of his car. <laughs> Sorry guys. Hey, let me mute it real quick. Yeah, yeah, it's just picking up the sound and it's blocking Wes out. Hold on just a second, Wes. Okay. All right, go ahead, Wes. Um, when we do the post, are we going to write about what we're doing or it tied into the blog or it tied into the channel? We kind of give a, you know, like a trade, stuff like that. It was like an example of what it would be? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you, could, you could write on... Um, I mean, I'm from the Eastern Shore too, so I so I understand. You know, we both come from the same place. Well, you could you could write an article about I don't know whoever the old man was in your life back when I was growing up. There was a guy named Brother Bosman, and and Brother Bosman was a living journal. So he would tell you things like, "Hey, man, when the cherry blossoms are on the tree, when this is happening, this is happening. You want to be here." And 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 so so you could write about journaling that way. So it's so it's entertaining to somebody because everybody knows an old man that used to tell them what to do. When the cows are feeding, it's good fishing. When the cows aren't feeding, don't bother to go. You know that kind of stuff. And 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 so you can you can talk about journaling. You can talk about um, why why um, marking your spots and, and collecting environmental data. Is so crucial to what you do as a victim. You could write about um, why it's important to have a backup navigation system for your boat, which this is a perfect, perfect thing for guys who fish. What happens if my electronics go out? But I got it. I got the charts right on my phone. You know, there's there's so many things that you can do that'll dovetail into the product and to the products that you guys are that you guys are sponsoring. Does that does that make sense? And I'm more than happy, more than happy to to talk about it. You know, 
if your turn's coming up and you know you're like two weeks out and you just have a brain fart and you don't know what in the world you're going to put on there, give me a call. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to give you some ideas. I can, I can tell you that I've written um, eight different um, blog posts on nothing but journaling. And, and D will tell you that you don't want to make them long because people won't read them. You want to make them about four paragraphs. You want to get to the point. You want people to read them and say, hey, man, that's, that's a good nugget of truth. Like one nugget of truth in every blog that you do. You get more than that and people start, you know, they go cross eyed Make sense? Any questions? Nope. Okay, good. All right, so we'll set up the blog sites. We'll get that out. We'll get the content schedule out there. Um, I already took care of who sets up the pages. Um, we'll also be giving you guys how you're going to be able to access that, what your username, passwords will be. If it's one hunting blog to start with and one fishing blog to start with, it'll be common usernames and passwords for everything. Um, and we'll give you the schedule of submissions. All right. So here, this is my next thing, is what do we need help with? Alan was so kind this week, and I'll mention Alan. He texts me, and he says, he says, hey, man, what can I do to help? And and I told him, I said, clone me. Because <laughs> that, that's really how I felt. I'm like, my God, if I get one more thing on me, I'm going to freaking explode. I don't have any hair right now because I pulled it out all this week. I had a full head of hair before the week started. Just kidding. Um, but this is this is what we're looking for. Is is I would like to see one of you guys step up and. and Sorry, my bad. I think I think the dog just killed something. <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. We're looking for one of you guys to step up and be the pro staff manager. And what? so what would that mean? That would mean that you guys would be the first line of defense for everybody else. So that would be somebody who would be acquainted with the content management, would be acquainted with the Dropbox, you know, where you get the graphics. We get, we get emails all the time, people wanting to become pro staff. Frankly, right now, I'd like to put a hold on it until we can really dial in and, and and provide stability to what we have right now. And then once we have that stability, that, that pro staff manager would be responsible for vetting those people and, uh, and agreeing to bring them on or not to bring them on. And, um, or having to release pro staff, you know, that, that are, just aren't doing anything. Um, so that kind of thing. So if you're interested in doing that, let me know. Now, am I asking you to do that for free? No, I'm not. But I'm, I'm willing to give a vested interest in the company to the person who wants to step up. And uh, But I'm not willing to do that prior to ability to come. You know what I'm saying? Because, because if I just give something to somebody and they don't do anything, well, now I'm out. And that and that's and and if I got three hundred thousand dollars and two years of work invested in that, whatever percentage I'm giving you, I'm basically taking money out of my pocket and the pocket of investors who have put money into this and giving it to somebody. So if you're interested, there is the potential of of, of having that. But I just need, I just need you to show me that whoever it is can actually do it, do it faithfully, and, and bring value to the, to the company. Um, the next thing is is that the one thing that, that Paul did do and he did a good job of was regulations. Okay, the regulations were creating a a new database and a new um, front end for entering that that stuff. It was very difficult, unbelievably difficult, to get 50 states fishing and hunting pull all that stuff down in different formats and get it into the initial database. That work's done. Now, the new system is just point and click. And, it, and it's updating the data. For fishing, it's a cinch. For hunting, it's changing dates most of the time. 
Um, sometimes it's it's adding a species that maybe couldn't have been hunted last year that can be hunted this year. Sounds like monotonous work, maybe so. But again, that that that's one of the things that we need. Now, why does it need to be somebody like you guys? Because you can't hire some data entry person off the street who doesn't know a blooming thing about hunting and fishing and ask them to get involved in regulations. You can imagine the mess that we have. So it has to be somebody that's acquainted with it. So if you're interested in that, you can you can let me know. And again, that's another vesting opportunity. Trade and work for shares from the company. Okay. Um, that's all I got, guys. Um, I want to open it up for any questions or comments. And and let me tell you that I'm the first one to understand that a meeting like this is long overdue, and and it should have happened way before now because there's been too much floundering, not enough interaction. We want to do these once a month, and um, and I want to be the one who apologizes from our end for not for not having that gap closed. But I assure you that we're doing everything we can to organize this and be efficient in what we do so that you guys have every opportunity to be successful in what you do. Hey Christian, I got I'm having a little bit of a problem up here. Um, I talked to Paul about it a little bit. Um, a lot of our areas up here do not have Wi-Fi or internet connection and the app for a lot of people is not able to be used. And I understand that takes a lot of work because I'm in software myself, but it makes it hard to get people to buy the app up here. Great, great point. And actually, it's something I forgot to tell you guys too. Waterfowl, and I don't know, Rob, you've seen it. Waterfowl Ops has the ability to cache maps, so you can use it in an offline setting. And and what you what you want to do is before you know you're going out to that area that doesn't have an internet connection, that's when you want to download the map for that area. And and if you guys can see my screen, this this is what's called the extent of your screen. It's real easy, right? But if I didn't tell you that, you'd probably ask me. Um, but if if you go if you go in here, let me just pull up waterfowl right now. Hopefully you guys can all see my screen. Yeah, uh, there's a glare. That's light. I have too many apps on my phone. Um, the caching is not difficult now, Rob. That's the good news. It was incredibly difficult for the other development company because they didn't have a blooming idea how to do it. The the new waterfowl ops and the predator ops. You guys can see this. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Yes. It's right below the centering button is the map caching button. So now let's say that, you, that the extent of my screen, Rob, is this is this is the area that I want to cache. I'm gonna I'm either gonna pinch my map or I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up and then I'm just gonna hit the cache button. Okay. Now, what happens when you do that is you're going to see how many megabytes that file is. Maps are incredibly huge files. So you don't want to go and try to download the whole state of Montana because that's not going to work. You want to you want to get a, a certain geography that's going to get you into where you're hunting, get you back out to your truck, and get you home. So so that's, that's all you're going to want to catch. Okay. The second thing is, is that, and these are some really cool things. We're the only company that I know that has this simple caching mechanism. Most of them you would not believe how hard it is. This is so blooming easy. I mean, you just get the map on your screen, tap the cache button, and you're done. So now, what happens when you go into an offline situation? Well, as soon as you go in that offline situation, Rob, and and you can no longer connect to the internet and your map fails, that map is going to load automatically. So you don't have to do anything. And and I'd encourage you to try that with the waterfowl ops and make sure that that's working okay for you. And you could 
And here's the other thing: is that you can't you can't cache Google Maps, you can't cache Apple Maps, so you can't get a satellite map, right? The cache and a satellite map is a great thing to use when you're hunting. Well, the good news is we have a satellite map that you can cache, and we're the only, one of the only ones that has that. So that's good. Now, you don't want to go. I understand, Rob, what you do. You're big game. You're big uh, game hunting. You're not out there doing a lot of waterfowl hunting. Waterfowl hunting is probably something you want to do in your spare time when you're not collecting racks like it's on your wall. Um. <laughs> So, are we going to put map caching in every one of them? Yes, we are. Okay, right now, this is this is where we are with what we're doing now. And and I'm so glad that you brought this up because I forgot. And I need you guys' help with this. Part of the management of this is is having. Let's just take hunting. We have pink ops. We have trophy whitetail ops and we have hunting ops, and they're all the same application with different skins. Okay. Now this is what we're thinking about doing. Number number one, the relationship we have with with just for does and just for bucks is going away because it's just been an unsuccessful venture with them, and those apps are they're doing nothing, and uh, and so I'm not going to keep those in that relationship. My thought is, is to take all, take trophy whitetails off the market, take the other one off the market, and have one hunting ops that does everything. That saves the company money, saves me money because I have to pay developers $140 an hour to do this work, and it gets really expensive. And and so that means that only having to do it one time would be a great thing. The other thing I'm thinking about doing. And and you guys tell me what you guys think because it is very important that I hear from you guys. Is is I'll put pink ops and I'll put trophy whitetail ops on the website for partners to get. So if somebody says, yeah, I I, I want to I want to target women hunters. So they so they'll still be available. They just won't be on the market. The other thing is is what I want to do with fishing. Is I want to pull bass ops off the market, and I want to pull the the saltwater fishing ops off the market, and I want to have one fishing ops pro. So, and it's basically going to be saltwater fishing ops that you see now with the nautical charts on it and all of that stuff. It it just gets it's too ex my here's my thing it's too expensive to manage all these different apps. It's it's too much time to try to do all of that, and so my thing is is that if I can consolidate the hunting into basically one hunting ops, which has wallows on it, by the way, Rob. So so for guys that are big game hunting, it's got some of those features, and and then if if the relationship that I'm working on now with Bassmasters and with um, Hummingbird comes together, Bass Ops goes back live. But, but I just don't have the money to be able to invest in all of that. I don't have the time. I to do all of that. If somebody comes up with a relationship and and they want to put something out, we'll we'll do it. We'll go for it because they're going to pay us money to make that happen. So what do you guys think about that whole thing? What do you guys think about pulling some of these down? Are you for it? Are you against? It? Give me some feedback. Well, I'm, I'm against the bass being pulled because that's the one I use. Who's who's saying that? It's Alan. Who? Alan? Alan. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? Oh, not terrible. But I mean, if you, I, I guess if you incorporate the bass back into the fishing, then it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, you'll, you'll still be able. But to you've got to separate. You've got to separate your fresh water. Well, my only concern is separating between fresh water and salt water. As far as regulations go. Is that what you mean, Alan, as far as regulations?
Canal. Well, no, but you know, I guess I haven't looked at the saltwater one. Yeah, can I, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. It must be a delay in the in the audio. Christian. Yeah, you... we're do, it's just real glitchy right now for some reason. Christian, do you have headphones? Uh, I do. I have. Can to go. can you? Are they handy enough to put them on? I'm sorry, I should have said that to begin with. Uh, um, it works better if I have a headset. All right. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Is it better? Yeah, it must be. I, I think if somebody else is talking without headsets, then it's going to be some feedback no matter what, unless everybody muted themselves and then unmute yourself when you're ready to talk. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Alan, a little bit of difference between between the bass ops and the uh, saltwater fishing. The you can still mark all your spots. You can still do do all of that. I don't have any inland like charts for bass fishermen. They're very very expensive. But that's also why I'm trying to put this deal together with Hummingbird because Hummingbird just came out with what's called Lake Master. Lake Master has all of those all of those uh, charts for the major lakes of the U.S. and um, and so that was my only thinking. I don't mind leaving it up there. The other the other thing I get a little bit concerned about too is that is that the bass ops is really not where I want it to be, and I hate for it to be up there. And th and and this could be because. It's like inviting somebody over to your house, and they look at your house and say, "Man, you got a beautiful house," but you're the one that knows where the where the molding's not not put together. You know where the paint's missing. So some of this could be my own personal bias against my own work. I know all of the places, and and so sometimes I get a little scared that if Hummingbird pulls that application, that they may be like, eh, "I don't know." If they pull saltwater and they see that that I've got nautical charts on there, you know it might make a difference. That's that's my only thing, Alan. I actually uh, recommend. Well, that, uh, maybe we could try to push. Go ahead, bud. Um, I actually recommend that to Paul. A couple back. Uh, I spoke with him on the phone for a while, and uh, I recommend possibly pulling some of the apps and condensing everything into one, like you said, as far as the fishing, um, the fishing apps versus the bass mastery apps versus the saltwater apps. Now the saltwater apps is obviously substantially better. Hey, Wes, you're going, you're going in and out. We're catching like one out of every eight words, and it's not that you're going out completely. It's that the audio is going in and out. I don't know. Um, is this any better? A lot better. Um, I was mentioned this to Paul a couple months ago. Hey, hold on just a second, Wes. Can everybody mute their microphone if they're not talking? Because it, because I think that that might be part of it too. Okay, try it now, Wes. Um, can you hear what I'm saying? It's just broken. No, it's better. Uh, I had mentioned this to Paul a couple months ago. Uh, we had talked on the phone, and I thought it was starting to get a little... I think everything was starting to get, uh, like you said, uh, the same app with a different skin. Um, and I, I think people had a hard time seeing through the, the different apps and what they could do. I think it's a great idea just to have like this just make it simple. Hunting ops, fishing ops, pink ops. Um, if you wanted to leave that one in there, I think if you know somebody bought the fishing ops, then you know, the the saltwater stuff should be involved in the, the bass. And you know you can leave the stuff that's in the bass. I mean that for somebody who you know in my position that that doesn't I don't mind going around that stuff because I do use it from time to time. Um, but, you know, I have I have the original uh, uh, fish ops on mine, but I don't have the saltwater. 
and, you know, when it came out, I had purchased the uh, fishing hops before becoming a pro staff. And I just I, I looked at it and I said, well, I have a hard time stepping up and buying another one when I know what I want. You know, it's just it's one of those things where if you've got one app and you can concentrate on the one app for each for one app for hunting and one app for fishing, I think it'd make everybody a lot happier because they wouldn't you know, when you come out with an update or when you come out with something, everything is there. You don't have to go through different apps and update different apps or possibly buy different apps. Um, you know, I, I just think it's a lot simpler and a lot better user interface. Anybody else have have an opinion on uh, on some of this? Because your opinions are very valuable to me. I'll tell you that. Christian Scott, can you hear me? Okay. Do you think yeah. we could? Hi, Scott. Uh, um. One thing I really liked, uh, so one kind of get one thing to get back to what uh, Wes said about uh, having not used the the saltwater fishing ops, and I don't know, I think it was you I exchanged emails with. I kind of had been unhappy with the original fishing ops a little bit, saying there there, there were some things we could change and blah 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 blah. And then uh, I downloaded the saltwater uh, fishing ops, and the improvements over the original fishing ops. Uh, were pretty stunning. I, I thought that it was it was really a huge improvement. Uh, so when when you say that you know we're thinking about combining them, I mean the the what my concern is is that there's such a difference in the things that I'm concerned about as a saltwater fisherman compared to a lot of freshwater fishermen. Things like uh, tidal flow and and some things like that. Uh, different species, those kinds of things. Uh, my only concern would be that there would be a tendency to favor one over the other. Uh, sometimes, if you're, you know, if your development team or the people that you're taking input from uh, have a tendency to do one more than the other, something might uh, might get left out. That would be my only concern. I, I understand it certainly from business standpoint. You know, when you got a whole bunch of different products out there, I know it's a it's a huge pain in the butt to manage. Uh, like I said, though, I just I would caution you to make sure that um, that you don't lose the the functionality uh, differences between the two types of fishing. Um, and and one thing I would like to add is um, the ability to uh, select a species. Like when you hit the mark button. Or the photo button, or whatever it is, uh, to to log a catch. Uh, it would be really nice to have like a drop down menu where you could select the species of the fish uh, that you're, you know, so you already have it in there. And if you have a saltwater ops and a freshwater ops, you could kind of pare that list down quite a bit. Um, and then maybe even an ability to set it up to where like the most frequent species that you're catching, because the 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 one thing that I've found that still kind of bugs me a little bit about the app is when I'm on the fish and I'm catching fish, the last thing I want to do is spend, you know, a minute and a half fumbling with the app and saying, oh, you know, trying to type in the whole name and all of that kind of stuff. So the quicker you can make that data entry, the more useful it becomes to a fisherman, especially, I mean, anybody who's fished, you know, when you get on the fish, especially in salt water and they're crashing bait fish, you know, it's it's... You get nervous and your fingers start fumbling around, and you know the last thing you want to be do is is uh, is be messing with your phone. So, well, uh, that's, well, that's my only concerns there. Well, I got I got good news for you, Scott. The good news is is that I fish a lot more than I hunt, so I'm I'm the right dog on hunt here. <laughs> so um, the the saltwater fishing ops, you know, if we go to the fishing ops pro. I, I'm okay, you know, like if Alan's liking the bass ops, I'm okay leaving the bass ops up there. My only concern, again, was my house, you know, and, and I got, you know, the paint chipped on the wall here, here and there, and, I, and I'm a little concerned about the, um, uh, the uh, inspection that a group like Hummingbird may give to us. And um, and then choosing whether or not they want to work with us 
based upon that. That's my only concern. Saltwater fishing ops, I'm not concerned about it because, you know, to be able to provide nautical charts and nautical charts that update automatically, you know, there's not very many people who provide that. And and by having NOAA's charts, those of you who know anything about saltwater navionics or don't, um, but the U.S. Coast Guard comes out with updates weekly with their notice to mariners and they tell them about changes in the charts. We're the only ones that I know of who have that automated system that if the chart's updated, that chart's updated that very week and um, without any further download or anything else. The other thing about the salt water that I will tell you, and you may not have been in here for the conversation, is we are redoing the regulations. The regulations database is also going to funnel into the catch database and it will have the thumbnails on there, the thumbnail photos. It will be a scroll up, scroll down. You'll be able to toggle between saltwater fishing and freshwater fishing so that only the saltwater species populate when you have a saltwater catch. Only the freshwater species populate when you have a freshwater catch. The, uh, the other thing we're going to do is going to be able to make it so that you can edit your journal. So, because you know that we get, if you're familiar with the saltwater fishing application, you know that what we provide is a sea surface temperature that comes from the satellite. Well, just because you get it from the satellite, a lot of times when you have it into your, into your transducer, you're getting a far more accurate reading of the water temperature. And so being able to go back in there and, and edit your water temperature is important. The second thing that we did, and that I want to make sure you're aware of, Scott, is that is that there is a quick catch button in the GPS slider of the saltwater fishing ops. So you don't have to put the, the picture in. You don't have to do any of that. It's simply tapping a button because you're right. When you're busy catching fish, you want to be catching fish. You don't want to be taking pictures. So, so we added that GPS button. It says catch. And, it's, and as soon as you push that, it's going to record all of the environmental data the same way that the photo did. So that is in there now. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, is there a way for you to get uh, us the apps? That, if, like, I don't have saltwater fishing. Obviously, that's what I do 90% of. Um, I don't have that, though. Is there a way for you to get that to us? Or do we need to go in and, uh, and purchase it? Yes. The, the, if you guys... Now, I can do it real easily for, for iPhone users. iPhone users, I can go in there and I can gift you an app. Not a big deal. And, and for those of you, whatever app you want or whatever app you don't have, just send me a, shoot me an email. I'll make sure that you guys have the apps that you want. Okay? I'm not asking you to pay for them. So I just, just shoot me an email. Tell me what you want. Tell me your operating system. I'll get them to you. The the um, for Google for Android, it's a little more difficult because I actually have to go and buy a gift card. Well, guess what the gift card denominations come in? Five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars. So so if I buy you a five dollar gift card, I haven't even bought you saltwater fishing ops because it's still a dollar ninety nine more. They're skinning me for 30% off the top, so really now that $10 gift card I had to pay that money for, and I only got $4.89 back from Google Play. Now call me a tightwad. I am because I'm broke. <laughs> but I can. what I'll do is if you, have, if you have Android and you want some of the more expensive apps, if, it, if it's a, a waterfowl, I'll send you a $10 gift card. If you want waterfowl and you want salt water, I'll send you a $15 gift card, and you guys just have to pay the other $1.99. <laughs> Is that fair? I really, I, yeah, I've been wanting to get the uh, salt water, and I hadn't gotten it yet. So I'll send you an email afterwards. And, you know. uh, yeah, we we still only get about one of every eight words that you say, Wes. But I think you said that you want to get it and you'll email me, but I'm not sure. So that's what I see. I'm sorry, I got off the source. Okay. Um, anybody else got anything that they, they need to talk talk about, discuss? 
Hey, Christian, just to kind of touch back on what I was talking about before. Um, I don't know if you guys are dealing with it where you're at, but uh, hunting GPS maps has created a landslide market here in the western states where they can, uh, they've actually got the information of land ownership and built it into an SD card to go in GPS's and in phone apps. Mm -hmm. So it's for ownership, and it does a lot of what you guys created a couple years ago. But, and they've and they've taken they've taken it to a level that's just kind of uh, overtake overtaken our whole market. And I I've I've seen it. I've kind of played with it, and uh, they're running off all their stuff as satellite topo maps and uh, the problem we're having here kind of like I was talking about before with uh, internet signal that they're with the GPS system they're not needing it at all and it does a lot of catching and a lot of other things and I think that's another one of the things that we're struggling with over here in the western states yeah you're you, so so just to make sure that I'm that I'm understanding what you're saying is what they have is they have an application that overlays on the topo maps and gives you the boundary lines and the and the owner of that land. That and also state state land, forest service land. It it tells you pretty much everything. Yeah, I know our our topo map that we have. It's called the Neotrex topo, uh -huh. and and you if you guys are inside of that, it will show you public lands. It doesn't show you private lands. That information's available. But it's it's kind of like everything else. It costs money to get that because you have to pay the you have to pay the company that has that data in order to do that. And so, as much as I would love to do that, Rob and I, you know, look if 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 some investor comes in and puts in some money, I got no problem investing in things like that because I want to do everything I can to improve this and make it the very best it can be. But um, if the way things are now, if they stay this way, man, I don't know how long it'll be before I'll be able to afford to pay somebody that kind of money to to get that kind of data in there. And most of the time when you get that data, you're paying that company per download, just FYI. And, 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 and just so you guys do understand, too, that we are going to move to a, um, it's not a subscription-based product, but we are going to move to a pay-per-user type of thing, where they'll get the first however many megabytes of data free, but after that they're going to have to start paying for it. Because imagine on a 4.99 app, on a 4.99 app, we net three dollars and fifty cents. On three dollars and fifty cents, you have to maintain that person's account. For perpetuity, and it doesn't matter how much data they take up on your server, you're paying for it. It's just a recipe to go broke. It's to you'll be paying for people to use your product, and uh, and so we're going to go to that that model of you get so much for free. And by the way, just like the Mojo model has a free and a paid, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come out with a free version and a paid version for all of these. And uh, the free version will be dialed down. The pro version will be dialed up, and um, and and they'll have a certain amount of data that they get for free on both of them. On the paid one, it'll be substantially more, and uh, and then they'll be paying for what they use. But this is a I, I can tell you, it's a business full of landmines, and uh, and and if you're not careful. You know, you might you might just blow off a finger or a toe or two, but if you're pretty if you're pretty darn naive like I have been in the past, D will tell you, you got a good chance of blowing your whole self completely up. <laughs> so, but but thank you, Rob, for that for that input. Yeah, and you guys' input's very important, and 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 I and trust me, I want to do everything on y'all's wish list. Um, I just got to figure out, you know, what I can do next, how I can pay for it, because as I said, I'm not getting paid 
you're not getting paid, nobody's getting paid, you know, or we've been working for free here for two and a half years. Is it something that I hope to make some money with? Well, yeah, you better believe I do. I've invested my whole life savings into it, so I do. So maybe on that, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Is it is it Alan? Who's talking? Can you hear me? This is Alan. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Alan. So maybe on the on that line of notes, maybe we could do uh, just a fresh water and a salt water with the equal amounts versus, you know, you could put your nautical charts on for your salt water because nautical charts don't mean anything in the rivers and ponds that I fish in. And then on also on that is maybe something to do with voice to where you could push a single button and talk and tell what that, you know, kind of like a Siri where you don't have to have your phone out in the water. You can just touch one button, maybe have it on a Bluetooth headset and tell it what to type and then it saves. Yeah, I think I think one of the other improvements we can do, Alan, and, and I think that Scott would probably applaud this one too, is is the ability to, like with the quick catch button, when you're catching fish, push the button, and then later, when you're done fishing, be able to add the photo to it. So now you got the photo attached to the right catch or whatever it is, and and I, I think all of those things will be make it a lot easier. I, th I love the voice thing. I think that's great, and that's an easy thing that we can do to add it. Now, I'm gonna, I will tell you this, too, that we are working on predictive analytics. Now, what are predictive analytics? Analytics are that we can take the data and we'll be able to predict where what you're going to be able to do and in what area based upon what's been caught around it and the environmental details. So if I fish today and I'm thinking about fishing tomorrow, it'll give you, based upon what the forecast is tomorrow, the predictive analytics of success. And, uh, and, and that's a huge, huge undertaking. And um, but that's what we want to do. You know, the website—it's been a damn disaster forever. And um, and so I'm working on on other relationships with with companies that that are GIS, the geospatial specialists, but also have the ability to create the kind of predictive analytics that that we want. And I I think it's I think it's a positive thing for hunting. I think it's an incredible thing for fishing. Because, you know, especially saltwater fishing, I don't know about freshwater fishing because I just haven't done a lot of it, but I know for saltwater fishing that, it, that if you match the water temperature, the barometric pressure, the temperature, you're, the, in the wind, the chances of you being successful as you were the day before are very, very likely. And, um, and so I think being able to have those kind of predictive things is going to be good. You know, our, our whole business model, just so you guys kn know too, was it's threefold. It is get the app, a stable app I might say, get the apps into as many hands as possible. Get out there and, and have this application go into a mass adoption mode. Then what we want to do is get into the website do some of those things with the predictive analytics, have another means of monetizing the business through that and through advertising because, and it's not just, you know, throw ads up and not that kind of advertising, but geospatial advertising. So if you're freshwater fishing, you don't want to, you don't want to know, you know, that there's an ugly stick that you can buy that's 12 feet long that you can fish from the surf from. You're not going to care about that. But you might be caring about a Gene Loomis rod that just came out for crappy fishing or for bass fishing. And so being able to geospatially produce not just ads, but the things that you want to the retailer's location, to your location. And, um, and so that's our second part of, of the monetization of the business. Thirdly is the ability to, to be able to take the data, the scientific 
environmental data of this stuff and be able to provide it to academic institutions, government institutions, and some of you may cringe when I say that. We're not providing the government with names. I would never do that. Somebody could shoot me in the freaking head before I do that. I'm not providing them anybody's. I'm providing them raw environmental data only. Uh, this trout was caught here in this conditions. Nothing more. And uh, But that information is critical so that all of us, because there's no there's fishermen and hunters give more to conservation than any other group and all of those other groups combined. So we're immensely concerned with conservation of our natural resources. I don't think any of us are going to tie ourselves to a tree and start hugging it anytime soon. I know I'm not. But but I am. I do want common sense conservation so that when my daughter is my age, she's still out there enjoying the same things I am. And I think you guys all feel the same. That's why we're doing it. So that's kind of the threefold plan. But that plan has been incredibly, you know, um, tasking because we have not had the developer who could get us where we need to be. I think we have that one now, you know, with who we're working with. Christian, if you, if you don't mind. I do, from what it sounds like. Go ahead, Alan. I, what I was saying is that what it sounds like is we need to get those emails that you said at the start of the program and start building up from there with our pro staff because it seems like our apps are all in decent working order as it sits right now. Now we just just have got to get out and um, get them to the public. Yeah, I'll tell you. I tell you what, I really have confidence in because these are the apps that I've worked on. Is I have confidence in hunting ops right now, 100 percent. I have confidence in saltwater fishing ops, 100 percent, and I have confidence in the Mojo products. After that, my confidence level starts going down. Christian, if you don't mind for a second, I'd like to to jump in again. Sure. Um, one, I'm really glad you brought up the website. Uh, this is something that, uh, another piece that um, I think is so close to being such a killer piece of this, this whole puzzle. Uh, and, and to hear you touch on that really uh, makes me very happy. Uh, also, kind of to... Uh, your comment about not passing information to the government is kind of ironic. I'm a, I'm in, I don't know if any of the rest of you know, but I'm in the army and I'm an uh, intel analyst in the army. Um, so I'm very uh -oh. sensitive to those issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm but, get locked up now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but to, but along those lines, so that kind of thing in fishing, having that access to that kind of data. And then the website to be able to bring it all together, sit down and look at my logs and on, on a on a PC where I can kind of spread it all out all over the monitor and everything, and look at the different locations I've been catching fish and time and all of that kind of stuff uh, is is really really interesting to me. And I think many fishermen like me would be extremely interested in being able to uh, to add that piece to be able to analyze the data that they've collected because I think we're pretty pretty solid on actually collecting the data. Now, how are we going to make that accessible to fishermen to to analyze it in the long term? So it's it's really nice to hear you talk about that, and we can talk about that further offline. Yeah, no, I'd love to talk about it, Scott. I and you weren't here for the beginning of it, but you know we we've, we've had um, and 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 really this is all comes back to me because I'm the team leader, so it, so I have to take responsibility ultimately. But um, you know, our first developer took us for about forty grand and gave us nothing. This last developer, we probably paid D probably tell you probably somewhere around I don't know, a hundred grand. Wow. And and they'd been working on the website since last December. I fired them in November. Yeah, I that's, couldn't take uh... I, I couldn't take it anymore, you know? And yeah. and and so so now you know, we are looking for a website developer that has the GIS uh, specialty to be able to to bring all of this together. 
we have some identified. Now it's a matter of can we afford it? <laughs> right, right. And, and along those lines, um, and I'm I'm very sensitive to what you're talking about about you know in, investing so much money in it, and at some point the reality is you have to see a return. So I, I really get that. My wife just started a business this year, so we're feeling the pinch as well. Um, part of uh, part of all of this, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, is that I'm getting out of the army this year. And I'm trying to go back to Florida. That's where I'm from originally. And one of the things I would like to see, and of course this this brings up another money issue, um, is, is promotional materials that I could maybe go to a fishing show or um, a tackle shop or something and start start handing out to people, and it adds a little bit of legitimacy, and, and then I don't have to try to show that person right away, oh, go here and download the app. They have something that they can hold on to, you know, maybe later when they're thinking about it, they can go back and do it or, or things along those lines where the, the fishing show is one thing that really, really uh, appeals to me is being able to go out and, and kind of pass the stuff out and, and just get the word out to people because I don't think I have ever come across one single person who I've mentioned this app to that said, oh yeah, I've heard of that. So trying uh, to get the word out, I think, is a huge would, would be a huge benefit. Yeah, well, here, here's the God's honest truth. We have not had a dime. Well, we've had a dime every now and then. But when we've had the money to do it, we never felt like the product was something we wanted to tell anybody about. And so then you you spend that money into the development to get it where it needs to be. Now you don't have any money to market. And and D D is an incredible I mean she's amazing at, at what she can do. I've just never been able to get her the resources to make it happen. So I will do my very best, guys, to find an affordable way for me to get you guys some stuff in your hands. And and I promise you I'll do my absolute absolute best and anybody who knows me knows that when I tell you something I'm gonna get it done and um, and so I'm gonna do my absolute best to get something in your all's hands if it's something that that is even just a simple uh, buy full business card that's big enough to hand out and give enough information on I'll get to work on that right away Scott Okay, so you touched on the um, Predator app. What's the word on that, Christian? I you were supposed to send me an email for the tr uh, um, testing it. Where are we sitting on that now? Yeah, and I'm sorry, Alan, that I missed that. I mean, I the class I've been in for two weeks. I you telling me this now? I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. So let me just apologize for uh, not sending you the email for the testing. I've been testing it all week. I've been. I had to get up at you know 3:30 in the morning to work with the developer before I had to go to class, and you can imagine when you get up at that time and you have to get right to work, you're not <laughs> you're not thinking about who you forgot on the email. Um, but it's already tested. It is it is in the app store for approval. I suspect it'll be coming out probably Monday. It'll be available, and at that time. All you guys that want that app, again, just let me know. I'll get that app to you. And uh, Android will be out Monday as well. Did you guys all and hear I'm that? For your clone, I'm not anywhere. Yeah, I got that. Thank you. And as for your clone, it's not anywhere near. So you might just have to have us help you a little bit. Yeah, well, I tell you, if it kept up the way it was, I'd just, you know, you guys be patting me in the face with a spade and planting some daisies over top of me. <laughs> hey, D, you got anything else that you want to you wanna add in here? And I know you guys is probably the first time you've ever met D, but uh, D is uh, she's just something special. And uh, I hope you guys, you know, one of the things I always wanted to do was to plan a uh, a retreat for the pro staff, have an all expense trip paid, you know, for you guys to come out where we could all get together. I promise you guys that 
you know, I am a giver to a fault, and there's nothing more that I want to do than than to make this thing successful. So that, and I can tell you, the the people that I want to bless the most are everybody else but me, and um, and I suck at that, and I'm going to tell you I do, and um, but I want to do that for you guys, you know. And when this thing's successful. You, get, you know, I've heard what other pro staff go through with the companies that they pro staff for. You guys stick with stick with me. You know, help me get this thing to be successful, and I promise you, you will never have a better company that you pro staff for than this one. And you'll never have anybody more generous than me, and that's a promise. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Okay. I was I I was um, kind of jump in a couple places and realized that I didn't have my microphone set up. So <laughs> why are they ignoring me? <laughs> um, I just wanted to just say really quick, and I've already um, started putting invites to a a board called Trello. It's a it's a it's it's a place to go and organize and put information so we can share amongst each other. So everything that we're talking about with blogs and social media, I'm going to put in there. I'm going to send you guys. You should get an email invite to this board, so you can. It'll. It's just a place to go and collect it, and we can. You can upload things to it, and um, all the information is going to be there. What I wanted to really quick just tell you, we're we're talking about the blogs and stuff. I've started a video series that I'm doing for um, another one of my brands. And it goes right along with this, so all that information is going to be in there about how to create content, where to find content, what. So you'll never run out of stuff to write about. But what I want to make sure that we're, that I'm ultimately concentrating on is your individual, whatever it is you guys concentrate on, or how if you want to build your brand, because if you guys build up your brand, personal brand, you're going to be kind of like a little celebrity in your niche, and then. As far as um, promoting the app, that means more eyes are on you, and people are going to look at you as a trusted source. So even if you can't, if you don't have something in your hand at a trade show, it might be that through your efforts and going through this process, when you go to that trade show, people are going to go, "Oh, I already know you," because they, of of what this is going to be able to do for you. So it's important to us that we help you if you're interested in doing that and building your brand that we help you do that. That's that's going to be actually be a, a great, you know, it's helping us and it's helping you, if that makes any sense. But if you guys had any questions for me just based on any of that right now, I'll be happy to try and answer them. If not, we are over an hour, so I just want to make sure I, I respect everybody's weekend here. And I appreciate you guys coming on. Hey D, maybe maybe an idea, maybe on that board, do everybody's contact so we okay. can all be in contact with one another. Because this is the first I, time I've seen most of you. I did start one just with talk. email right now, but if you guys want to share anything more than that, you can actually add it to this board. So I will put, I will send you an email invite to this board, and you will be able to um, add stuff at, like that as well. So that I'll leave that up to you. I didn't want to uh, infringe on anybody's privacy right off the bat, so. And, and, I, and I, I just really, real quick, I wanted to say something to Rob Bates. Hey, Rob, if you, if you don't have Waterfowl um, or the, you know, I know you don't have Predator, but um, I'll get the Predator to you. But I, but I really want to get the Waterfowl Pro to you so that you can try out the caching out there because I want to make sure that you're not going to have any problems with that. So um, just make sure you send me an email so that I can get that to you, okay, so you can try it out. All right, sounds good, Christian. Hey guys, thanks so much, and um, and I'm sorry this is long overdue. We will schedule one of these once a month. They won't be this long, and um, and you guys, my information will be on there, and uh, and call me anytime, and um, and if I'm not in the middle of an emergency, I promise I'll take your call. If I am in the middle of an emergency, I'll call you right back. Um, but uh, being connected to you guys is really important to me because I can get so Ton, such tunnel vision by being inside the minutia of this business that I can lose sight of what's going on in the field and that's why I need you guys' eyes and ears out there and you guys have been uh, uh, gracious enough to be on here and you give me so much good stuff and, and um, I promise I'll catch up to all that good stuff just uh, 
Just give me some time. I'm running. So anybody else got anything else? All right, guys. Well, well, have a have a wonderful weekend, and what's left of it, and um, and we'll talk again real soon. And thanks again. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.